The Clinton administration ordered the experimental use of the tick-borne encephalitis vaccine in Bosnia. Perhaps one of the most devastating executive orders regarding vaccines came under the Clinton administration. Executive Order 13139 essentially orders the use of experimental vaccines and or drugs at any time without the service member's consent to be given to anyone in the military as long as the president or the secretary of defense approves. During the first Gulf War, it was not unusual for a service member ordered to Iraq in 1991 to receive 10 to 17 vaccines in one setting. Thousands of U.S. and coalition military personnel who served in the Persian Gulf War are now seriously incapacitated from unknown causes. One common thread for all military personnel were the vaccines. Many of those who did not deploy became ill also. Unfortunately, the U.S. military medical establishment has continued to conduct on an ongoing basis operations such as Project Badger and that that has been referred to as a Manhattan-like project that involved the Tri-Service Vaccine Task Force. Credit for the best vaccine research should go to Gary Matsumoto in his acclaimed book entitled Vaccine A. Matsumoto concludes that the government covertly experimented on troops using squalene, which is an oil-based booster used to make vaccines stronger. Squalene has only been approved for use in experimental AIDS and experimental malaria vaccines. Since a large percentage of U.S. forces tested positive for squalene, it has led many individuals to believe that the anthrax vaccine could have been a primary clinical trial for an AIDS vaccine experiment. What the DOD should have disclosed to the troops is that squalene causes life-threatening diseases such as lupus, crippling arthritis, and multiple sclerosis. On May 11, 1999, at an Air Force briefing held at Dover Air Force Base, Air Force Surgeon General Charles H. Rodman II denied the use of squalene in the anthrax vaccine. He was backed up by Army Colonel Arthur Friedlander. However, six weeks later, the FDA identified the presence of squalene in two separate vaccine lots. With the reintroduction of the anthrax vaccine prior to the Second Gulf War, up to 50% of Air National Guard pilots resigned rather than take the deadly vaccine. To this date, the Department of Defense continues to give the anthrax vaccine to U.S. military. The minute you walk into a recruiter's office, the first thing they say is, young man, if you do this, you'll be taken care of forever. And in modern day, the 2021st century soldier, it includes women. So men and women are promised health care should they become sick from the battlefield. And the fact of the matter is, is that since Operation Desert Storm concluded, 10 to 11,000 soldiers are dead quarter of a million of us get a check from the Veterans Administration for undiagnosed illnesses and double that amount have actually gone to the Veterans Administration and entered into study groups known as ionizing radiation study groups and go for depleted uranium study groups and that's just being used as a guinea pig so we were abused by the Department of Defense we got sent to a contaminated battlefield we came home we we're being studied by the Veterans Administration and every time we turn around and look for some help somebody calls us a post-traumatic stress disorder and that's not appropriate we're not stressed out we're sick we've been contaminated I do what I do every day because the system hurt me Phyllis you're on the air with Dennis Kine go ahead please I just want to take time, Dennis, to thank you so much and be able to say this personally to you. And, and uh, I want to urge the folks to order your book. And uh, I can't go at the pace that I used to. And I, I, I'm you know, so thankful for someone like you to help some of us old timers. It hurt me as a soldier and it hurt me as a veteran. And I don't want to see anybody else get hurt. I don't do this because I need to inflict any pain on anybody. I do this because young men and women enter voluntarily into a system to go serve their country, 
serve their friends, serve their family, and serve their fellow Americans, and they get duped by the recruiter from the very beginning when they're told, if you get injured or become sick, we will take care of you. And for 14 years, I've been a prime example. My family members, my brothers, are prime examples of people who never got cared for. There's legislation in Congress right now to implement another draft. Every parent needs to decide if they're willing to send their child to be part of a military medical establishment experimentation process, because that's exactly what is going to take place. For the past 50 years, we've been experimenting upon hundreds of thousands of our military. It's incomprehensible the damage that has taken place in the lives of these servicemen and women. And it's not just the servicemen and women, it's their families, their spouses, their children that have been severely affected. It must stop. How will we ever get anyone to join the military knowing that they're going to be exposed to whatever the Department of Defense desires to do with them? Once people are aware of the massive amount of experimentation that takes place in our military, we won't have one. We won't have a group of people that will serve. And for obvious reasons. Because of the Ferris Doctrine, which has blocked any kind of compensation, assistance, or really any accountability from the Department of Defense or the military, our troops are living in some kind of slippery slope. They have no rights. With Executive Order 13139, they can be experimented upon without their consent anytime, any place. When will it stop? How will it stop? And what must we do? One of the, I think, problems with American law is that there is a number of ways that municipalities, states, and the federal government will often immunize themselves from what would normally be seen as tort actions. Um, in the United States, we have something called the Ferris Doctrine, which essentially articulates a rule of sovereign immunity that says the federal government is not liable for anything that happens to you while you are in military service. Uh, the doctrine originates uh, from, uh, from the year 1950, and the court at that time heard the case of a military uh, serviceman who was killed in a barracks fire, and uh, ultimately decided that it was good public policy not to allow these lawsuits. This really is the ultimate in hypocrisy. Uh, you can, you see the heroic search and rescue missions uh, where the government is very publicly uh, going in and rescuing uh, uh, prisoners of war and combat and the message there or the propaganda if you will is that we care about you the soldier the reality is very different the reality is that they are shielding themselves behind an outdated legislation and using uh, using the soldiers essentially as pawns in a chess game. The Ferris case was literally about uh, a serviceman who was uh, injured in a barracks fire in New York State. Uh, that's a very different kind of case than the subsequent cases that have been brought to the Supreme Court. Uh, a case like depleted uranium or Agent Orange or something like the Tuskegee uh, experiment, this is about the government knowingly allowing you to be injured. Some would argue intentionally allowing it to happen, certainly behaving through gross negligence to allow you to suffer injury to yourself. And the courts have consistently for the last five decades upheld this as a legal doctrine that is alive and well in this country. Now, recently uh, in the late 1980s, uh, ironically, one of the most conservative justices, Justice Scalia, has indicated uh, in a decision where he was joined by three other justices that the Ferris Doctrine was wrongly decided. And so there's some hope that the court is starting to see that a doctrine that began over the principle of negligence ought not be applied uh, when you get into uh, really criminal uh, knowledge. BeyondTreason.com will be a focal point, an area where people can go to find out what can be done, what needs to be done, and how to help. We must all join together to say, enough is enough. You see, if they experiment upon the military, the citizens are next. 
We can no longer play the role of esprit de corps in the military, of patriotism, of blind patriotism. We must accept the fact that it is our fault that we have allowed this to take place in this country. We call ourselves Americans and this is freedom, and yet our sons and daughters are dying. Those that are responsible for these acts should spend the rest of their natural lives in prison for what they have done. There is no question, from the presidents on down for the past 50 years, those that have been in charge of these experiments, there is no question that this is truly beyond treason.